<laughs> Today we're going to talk about colds versus sinus infections. <coughs> Hey guys, it's Matt the Bowtie Guy. In today's topic, we're going to be talking about colds versus sinus infections and how to tell the difference. Let's get started. Alright, so it's the season where everyone is sick. I've been seeing it day in, day out. Cough, cold, sinus infection, strep throat, pneumonia, flu, stomach bug, everything's going around, especially this time of year. Um, no matter where you go, you always hear someone coughing, sneezing, congested. Uh, who has a fever, who has body aches, who has a headache, who has a sore throat. Um, but today I really want to touch on an extremely important topic, especially in primary care, and everyone has battled this at least once or twice in their life, how to tell the difference between a cold and a sinus infection. All right, guys, colds. What the heck are they? So, you know, everyone gets colds. Um, you know, you get the sniffles, nasal congestion, runny nose, sneezing, ear pressure, sinus pressure, scratchy throat in the morning. Um, you know, that's a cold. That's the, all those symptoms together typically speak of a cold. They're caused by a virus. Um, viruses, uh, they, you know, they attack your upper respiratory tract when it comes to a cold, uh, causes inflammation, things swell up, and that's when you get all this mucus, all this congestion, all this pressure. Um, typically viruses, your body can fight them off pretty well. So a cold really will only last about seven or ten days, and then poof, it's gone. Um, you know, in terms of how to treat it, there's a different uh, number of things you can try over the counter that really can help. Um, one is uh, nasal saline spray, you know, just a simple old salt water spray that you can get over the counter at your local pharmacy. Um, it just rinses out all the mucus, helps open up your congestion. Um, works great. It's super safe. Anyone can really do it. Um, and yeah, it's very effective. Um, you know, the other thing you can try works like a charm. I remember when my grandmother used to tell me, use your Vicks Vapor Rub. Fix. Um, you know, it works wonders. It's soothing, it's relaxing, helps open up all that congestion, um, and it's pretty benign, you know, unless you have uh, any uh, true allergy to the actual Vicks Vapor Rub itself on contact, uh, it's safe. It's not going to cause any major issues for you. So try Vicks. It's never used a lot. Um, I tell all my patients, and after they use it, they love it. They forget how valuable it is. Oh, yeah, my grandmother used to use it, or yeah, my mom used to give it to me, my dad used to give it to me when I was younger it works, so definitely give it a shot. Now, the other thing is um, Mucinex. If you have a lot of thick uh, mucus, you can definitely use Mucinex. It'll help thin it out. Um, you can use Flonase. Um, that can help decrease uh, some of the pressure and dry up some of the post-nasal drip that you might be having. Um, and then certainly, you know, if you get headaches um, that are triggered by your nasal congestion, um, or the sneezing or just the pressure itself or a little bit of the ear pain or scratchy throat, uh, you can certainly take some Tylenol over the counter, um, Advil or Aleve, um, but definitely speak to your primary care provider about that, especially if you have heart disease, kidney disease, liver disease, or you're on a blood thinning medication. Um, so definitely chat about uh, that with your primary care just to make sure it's safe for you. Now, if you're young, if you're healthy, the congestion is pretty significant, uh, you can certainly use a decongestant. Um, now, people with heart disease, uh, things like that, you really need to be cautious with that. Um, all my diabetic patients, you have to be cautious of Mucinex and other over-the-counter medicines as they can raise your blood sugar. Um, so, you know, before employing uh, any of these uh, methods, definitely speak to your primary care provider and make sure they're safe for you. Um, but the two safest options that typically work really well for most patients, nasal saline spray and Vicks Vaporub. Anyone can use them safely and they really work, so give them a shot. Now, sinus infections. How to tell if it's a sinus infection and not a cold? So sinus infections are bacterial. You know, they, they can start off as viral, um, which typically, you know, are your cold-like symptoms for the first week or 10 days, but then after the fact, they can turn into a true sinus infection. So your immune system is fighting off the cold, it's preoccupied, bacteria can grow, the mucus has been stagnant, it's been sitting there, kind of grows like pond scum. I know it's disgusting, but it's the best an analogy I can give you. Um, so as the bacteria grows, then all of a sudden you create a lot of, you know, thick mucus, inflammation, and there's an infection within your sinus cavity. Um, typically this occurs after some sort of viral upper respiratory infection. So you've had a cold for seven to ten days, got a little bit better, and now all of a sudden you have sinus pain here, sinus pain here, you have pressure behind the eye, your teeth are hurting, your ears killing you, you feel like your head's in a bucket, it's all pressure and your sound is dulled out. So 
you know, that's a sinus infection. Sometimes you can have a fever, sometimes you don't have to, um, but typically, you know, you had a cold, it got a little bit better, and then all of a sudden your symptoms got really worse again. Um, also, the other way you can tell if you've had a sinus infection is, you know, if you had the cold symptoms, they've lasted a while, you've done a lot of over-the-counter measures and nothing has been working for you and the symptoms are gradually getting worse. You know, if it's been two or three weeks, you've had a lot of sinus pressure or pain, you know, your ears full, typically that's going to be a sinus infection and usually it's going to be bacterial. Um, now, what to do about it? So, Flonase actually really isn't that uh, recommended um, in terms of a sinus infection. Uh, the steroids can sometimes precipitate a worsening infection. The alcohols in um, the Flonase itself can sometimes be irritative. Um, so, usually the nasal saline spray, uh, neti pots, uh, there's a little controversy, you know, there's been articles about people, oh, they have an infection in their brain. Don't worry about that, you know, if you're using the right equipment uh, from the pharmacy, speak with your pharmacist about, you know, the safe type of water to use, things like that. Um, but neti pots can help rinse uh, all your sinus mucus out and this way it kind of clears things through and it's very soothing to those tissues. Um, nasal saline spray, like I said, um, fix vapor rub, that can help with the congestion. Um, as previously mentioned, the Tylenol, the Aleve, the Advil, those can help with the pain um, and the pressure as well. Um, definitely speak to your primary care provider about those. And then certainly, um, last but not least, um, are antibiotics. Um, now this is definitely a sore subject. When it comes to antibiotics, unfortunately, when everyone says, oh, I've got a sinus infection, antibiotics are written really quickly, given to you, you go to the pharmacy, you take them, and poof, you feel better. Now, sadly, they are given way too much. What can happen is, you know, you have a cold, it's been six or seven days, it hasn't gotten any better, you know, you're going on a vacation, you don't have time for this, you know, it's your son's birthday, you know, it's your mother's birthday, whatever it may be, you have special plans, you don't want to be sick for the weekend or the holiday. Unfortunately, an antibiotic, if it's a cold, isn't going to do anything. But if you meet those previous criteria for a sinus infection, absolutely, an antibiotic will indeed make you feel better. Um, there's all types of antibiotics that are used. Uh, first line is typically Augmentin, which is a type of penicillin or, or amoxicillin. Um, you know, if you're allergic to penicillins, you can use um, doxycycline, there's Bactrim, there's Cipro or Leverquin, uh, there's moxifloxacin, things like that. So, you know, typically your primary care provider will choose the right antibiotic for you should it be fitting for your clinical picture uh, based on your allergies, your medications, um, things like that. Um, now, the other problem, there are some people out there who have chronic sinus disease, uh, sinus polyps, or previous sinus surgery, and that can make things a little hazy. If it's been five days, but you're having a lot of pain and pressure, a lot of thick nasal discharge, um, tooth pain, things like that, unfortunately, it could be a bacterial sinus infection, and you may need antibiotics sooner. Those are special cases, but they do exist. So once again, guys, your primary care provider knows you best, so certainly talk with them when the time comes if you develop those symptoms, and they'll be giving you their best judgment as to what to do for treatment. Now, a little side note here, I have tons of patients who come in and they use Afrin. I unfortunately never recommend Afrin. It is a decongestant you spray into your nose and your body can become dependent on it. If you use it more than a couple times a day for like three or four days, there's a pretty good risk of developing a rebound congestion. So in other words, your body gets so used to the medication that when it doesn't have it anymore, all of a sudden you get this swelling in your sinuses and boom, you are stuck with a stuffy nose for a long time and it, it's, it's a pain to treat. So I never say use Afrin ever. Um, but for the most part, my rule of thumb is just avoid it. You know, Flonase, nasal saline spray, um, you know, Atrovent nasal spray, they have their place. Your primary care provider will be the best one to recommend what is best for you. Uh, but personally, I don't recommend Afrin nasal spray. It can be addictive uh, in terms of the body, uh, but I, I definitely wouldn't recommend it. All right, guys, to quickly sum up, cold, less than seven to 10 days, symptoms are pretty mild to moderate, You've tried some over-the-counter stuff, it is helping. Um, no fever or chills. And, you know, it's really pretty manageable. You know, it can be uncomfortable, but it'll get better on its own. The other thing, sinus infections. Longer than seven to 10 days, you had a previous cold, cough, whatever, got a little bit better, now your sinus symptoms are really severe. One-sided sinus pain, 
a lot of pressure, thick nasal discharge, sometimes a fever, maybe not, ear pain, tooth pain, headaches, things like that, that's a sinus infection. People with chronic sinus disease, nasal polyps, sinus polyps, um, previous sinus surgeries, you may be a little bit different, so definitely chat with your primary care provider if you do have the sinus symptoms. Um, if they're sooner than seven to 10 days, that's okay. Sometimes that can happen if you're at risk with the sinus issues you've had in the past. Um, now, in terms of what you can do for a cold, nasal saline spray, you can do um, decongestants, Tylenol, ibuprofen, Aleve, uh, you can do Vicks VapoRub, um, Mucinex, Flonase, things like that. Um, for a sinus infection, nasal saline spray, neti pot, Vicks VapoRub, decongestants, Tylenol, Aleve, ibuprofen, and then certainly if you fit the bill, your primary care provider feels it's necessary, antibiotics. Now, remember guys, I beg you, please listen to your primary care providers. Um, you know, they know their best um, at trying to help you get better. So if they're saying you don't need an antibiotic, I get it. You just took time off of work, you're not feeling well, you had to leave the house, you, know, you have to wait in the waiting room for a little while, you have to pay a copay, and they're just going to tell you, it's just a cold, there's nothing we can do. Unfortunately, that's, that's the best option. You know, if you take an antibiotic and you don't need it, it's, it's not going to do anything for you, it's only going to cause you harm, it's going to disrupt the good bacteria inside your body, and that can put you at risk of resistance, diarrhea, and even a super infection called uh, Clostridium difficile, which is a really nasty diarrheal illness. Nobody wants it. If you've heard of it, it is that bad, I can promise you. So I would highly recommend taking the judgment of your primary care provider to heart um, and just trusting that they know what's best for you. I'm not saying you have to follow them blindly, but at the same time, you know, put your faith in them. Uh, they definitely have your best interest at heart. All right, guys, there you have it. Cold versus sinus infection, how to tell the difference between the two, what to do for each of the symptoms. Uh, so definitely keep your eyes out. Uh, if you do have any of these symptoms, you feel like you're, there's a concern there, definitely chat with your primary care provider. Don't be afraid if they say you don't need an antibiotic. At least you got checked out and you made the right decision and you're, you're going to be taken care of. I hope you enjoyed this video. I look forward to the next one. I'm Matt the Bowtie Guy, signing off. See you later.